ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. All right, welcome to the Roundtable, everybody. My name is Robert Bannon. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. Today, we are. is there a show that is more timely? For the times that we're living in as an actor and as a performer, um, we stand proudly with all of the union. And, and look, welcome to being live on the internet <laughs> in the in the middle of South Carolina somewhere where they just invented the uh, the Wi Fi. Listen, he has done it all. I saw him. My first Broadway show was Beauty and the Beast in nineteen doesn't matter the year. And Brian Bat is here. Brian, hey, how are welcome. you? I'm so excited to be here and to talk about this show because the timing of this show um, is so important. Can you tell us tell us a little bit about Pay the Writer? Well, I, I did the workshop of Pay the Writer last summer. And to be honest, I thought, well, I don't know about this title. And then, you know, now it, it's so timely. It's not about the strike. It's not about um, all that. It's really about the relationship of um, my character, who is his agent. Uh, the, the head writer, a, a very famous novelist named Cyrus Holt, played by the wonderful Ron Canada. And um, our relationship, and then his relationship with his wife and children. His wife is played by the lovely Marsha Cross, who's just heaven. Um, so, yeah, it's about, you know, dealing with artists. And it's his end of life uh, moment. <clears throat> and, um, you know, what do you forgive these great minds? How much, how much can you let go? And, you know... <clears throat> You know, we have people in our lives and, you know, recently all these great, great geniuses, you know, have kind of let us down on, on some level. And um, it's, it's about that, but it's also about our relationships and um, it's like a triangle, but not necessarily a love triangle. It's very interesting. You know, it's fun. And it's, you know, we have three more days of rehearsals. And last week when we started previews, big changes came in because, you know, the audience is another character. And they will tell you instantly what is working, what needs to go, where where the play now lives. And um, so right after this, I go to rehearsal and who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> not new pages, not new blocking, not oh, new... Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Like literally the morning of the rehearsal of our first preview, an entire scene was cut and I was given a new monologue. Now, you know, it, it, some of it was changed and was like... All the backstage, I was just you know trying to learn it as quickly as possible. So, so yeah, what, that happens. What this is not, you're not filming this. This is live on stage. Live. You know, eight, eight shows a week, and it, there's no music. It's a straight. It's a play. So for, for people watching that are aspiring actors and performers out there, what is your method? How do you learn lines? How do you get the rhythm down? Take Prevagen so you don't lose your memory because that. <laughs> um, you know, do those memory games. Uh, because as you get a little older, it starts to be a little more difficult. I always find um, I write out my lines several times and go over, I have, to, I have to go over the script, the entire script before I do the show, at least once, you know. And then uh, just just because I open the play with a monologue, I go over that over and my first couple of lines just so they're just, it, you know, like riding a bike. But, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because with all the set and the tech and all that stuff, there's been some bumps and things off stage and you hear something, it, it, it'll take your focus and you have to really concentrate on just doing it right and not worry about what's going on around you. And it, it really, that, 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 with this play, that's been, that's been the hardest. But otherwise, it's a great group of people. That's what makes it you know, you get on this ride with these these wonderful actors and everyone is so giving and kind and we really, we've been through it. There's been several illnesses in the play. We've only had three weeks of rehearsal and we started previews, which is unheard of for a new play. Uh, and we only have a week of previews. And you know, there's been some hospitalizations for cast members. There's been um, our wonderful director, Karen Carpenter, fell off the stage and broke her ankle the first day of technical rehearsal and broke her ankle in two places horribly. I mean, really bad. She's going to have to have a major surgery. And um, But she's there. I mean, she came back. She's in a wheelchair with these pins and, and rods going through it and still directing via Percocet. So, you know, it's, 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 um, it's been a journey. And so far, the audiences have loved it. So I'm very excited. 
I was just reading about um, some people online who are, are friends of mine who I saw that the, you did a benefit performance. Your first preview was for the yeah. Writers Guild, and they were saying how wonderful the show is and the chemistry between you all. Here's a you know look. I mean, this cast by itself, just alone, oh. just the three is, is quite the uh, is is quite the 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 powerhouse to. to I know that picture of me. I'm like, why did we pick that one? I don't know. <laughs> That's paythewriterplay.com is where you can go get your tickets. It's limited run, so you got to get them quick. Make sure you come down and see them um, and, and see the show for sure. If you don't mind, while I have you here, you know, you you're, people may know you for many a things, but you are also a writer. I mean, you, yes, yes. This this book, She Ain't Heavy, She's My Mother, a memoir about growing like, and you, what a fascinating story you have and, and your childhood and growing up in the South and, and, and that, what was it like to be a writer and sit down and put your life story on page? You know, it started off very organically. I, I wrote, I told these stories at a party and a friend said, if you don't write them down, I will. So I started to write these sh little short stories while I was in Beauty and the Beast. And I sent them to a friend suggested I bring them to a, a book agent, Eric Meyer. And, um, I did, and he said, well, you know, short stories, maybe not, but you know, keep on working on it. And then Mad Men hit, and he goes, I think I'm gonna get your book deal. So we did, um, and then I had to finish it. And I, I was working and working and working, and then I, I hit a wall, you know, and um, my friend Joe Keenan, who's a fantastic television writer and written several novels, hysterical, he mainly wrote uh, Frasier, you know, so it's very funny. So I said, Joe, what do I do, what do I do? And he said, just write you stories like you're writing a letter to a friend that you haven't seen in a long time and they know nothing. You know, you're going to have to tell them everything about what's going on, the environment, the smells, the, every, you know, the write it all down and then go through it and you can start to edit and then let your editor, you know, help edit. But also um, at that same time, because my husband and I have a store in New Orleans called Hazelnut, um, it's home furnishings and gifts. Right around that same time, uh, one of the editors at another division of Random House came in and said, if you could do a design book, what would you do? And I basically said, I'll take pictures of rooms I like and tell you why. I have some philosophies on design, like don't be afraid of color. What did it ever do to you? Uh, you know, things like that. And um, she said, well, you, when you come in to sign your contract to do She Ain't Heavy, you know, why don't you come and tell, them, tell us what you'd like to do? So I did, and my agent's like going, give yourself some time. Give you, this is going to take time. And I'm, you know, like, I, I can do it. This is easy. Should have listened. Um, so then right after She Ain't Heavy, I was working with my, who I who co-wrote it with me, my friend Katie Danos. And we wrote a book called Big Easy Style. So that was, um, that was fun. But it was, you know, it, it's a challenge. You know, it's, you have deadlines and, and you have to do your homework. And, you know, I... I think I purposely chose being an actor so I didn't have to really do homework. I mean, you have to learn your lines and all that, but you know, you don't have to turn in papers. <laughs> but it was really fun. It was also very healing. Um, you know, when you go through and relive the stories, and, and you know, some are painful, but I was very lucky to have a lot of a lot of joy too in my childhood, and I was allowed to create and be creative, and you know, although. You know, I tried to be on the basketball team. I tried. So it was like, nope. No, there was one kid that was worse than me, and he shot at the wrong goal. <laughs> and he's now a gynecologist. I don't know what that means. But um, yeah, it, it, I was very fortunate. I, I had parents that my mother, but that I knew I was loved no matter what, which is, I think, the best thing for any child or anybody, anybody you know, to know in their core that they're loved no matter what. Absolutely. Well, you you were fascinating to me because you do a little bit and a lot of it of everything. I mean, if it, if it's if, if it's singing, if it's acting, if it's writing, if it's home design, if it's what you are and who. You know, I think I I, I remember here. I remember Sondheim, and there's a line in Into the Woods, and it's something like it's this and that, not this or that. And it really connected, you know, everyone's going to try to put you in a box. Everyone's going to try to say, this is what you do, especially in the theater. You know, you get categorized and, 
you know, I've got, I've had the good fortune to play many different, different roles, uh, different kinds of roles. But, you know, when we opened the store, I was a little, I'm a little freaked out because I'd never done anything, anything like that. My husband has done that here in New York, but it was a big learning curve, a big learning experience. And I feel like, you know, if you have a, an itch or desire to do anything in this life, you've got to try it. What's the worst that can happen? You can fail, but it's not really a failure. It's a learning experience. Um, so, yeah. And also, you know, moving up from New Orleans green, I was like 20 shades of green when I came up there. I knew nothing. And uh, to be an actor, like I'm going to and I go to the open calls and, you know, it, it, it does take some kind of innocence and some kind of confidence. I don't know where that came from, uh, but, you know, that that you've got to try. You know, I don't want to be, I don't think anyone wants to be on their deathbed going, mm, if I only did, you know. Yes. No. So, I uh, know my father died very young, and that really was, a, you know, a big push to just try things. Um, he died at 55, you know, which was very young. And for the last eight years or so of his life, he was not in good health. So he couldn't really do anything. He couldn't really travel. He couldn't, you know, it was very, very limited. And I just watched going, I do not want that to be me. I do not want that to be me. So... So yeah, no, it's a lesson in 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 just going out there and flying and not just go, just go out and do it. And also, I knew that you know they say you can't go home again. Yes, you can. Tom, <laughs> um, you can, especially when your home is New Orleans. It's it's a fabulous city. So I loved. At one point, I was we kept our place in New York, and we opened the store. And right after we opened the store, you know, I was offered another Broadway show. So I was up here doing that. And then after that. Mad Men happened. So we were, we had a little, we were renting a wonderful carriage house in New Orleans. We had the place in New York, and then I had to rent a place in LA. And I was like, this is crazy. I can't afford that. A, I couldn't, it was too expensive. And I was tri coastal. And, you know, when they recognize you at TSA, it's time to pick a city. You know, it's time to pick one. So that's when we kind of really decided, Tom and I decided to make New Orleans. And it was also after Katrina, and it was still coming back. and we kind of dug our heels in. You know, he was great about that too. He was like, moving from New York to New Orleans, it is a cultural shock in a way. And, you know, the first year or so, it was kind of bumpy. And, and But when Katrina happened, I I told him, I said, look, look, here's how out. You know, people will not blame us if we went back to him. He's like, I'm not giving up now. I can't give up now. I was like, that's what I wanted to hear. And um, the store's been doing fantastically for 20 years. You know, uh, he's amazing at running the store and all the every all the financial, the buying, the everything. I just go to the markets and go, I like that. I like that. And I'm I'm there like if I'm not doing a play or if I'm not in, uh, filming something or or I, I'm pretty much I'll I'll be there a lot during the holidays. I'm always there. You know, I'm and I'll do whatever I have to do, like wrap all the packages because we do gift wrap. And uh, just whatever needs to be done, but um, it's really his his baby. I'm just along for the ride. Ryan, I have a confession, and I I'm turning forty and on in October, and I said for my birthday I wanted to go. I've never been to New Orleans ever. I'm just Jersey trash, just Jersey. Yeah. I am. <laughs> I need to come down. Uh, yeah, you just stay away from Bourbon Street. You know, there's only. Yeah, I, no, it's great, and you don't. Have have to drink. I mean, it's it's there. It's known as a party town, but there's so many other things to do. The art scene is really great. The jazz. There's there's um. It's, it's the food is fantastic. If you like, I mean, it's there's there's so many great restaurants. And, what's that? I'm ready to eat. I'm gonna have to eat. And I'm oh, gonna have yeah, to stop yeah. over. Stop by your store if you don't. Um, yes. While we're while I have you, yes, please tell us what's the name of the store and where can we go and find it and. It's called Hazelnut. I named it after my grandmother. Her name was Hazel, and she was a nut. Um, actually, her maiden name was Nuss, which means nuts. So my great grandparents had a sense of humor. Um, and they, people can shop online too. It's www.hazelnutneworleans.com. Uh, and uh, it's just home furnishings and gifts, some things I designed for the store. And it's just it, check it out. It's fun. People really like it. 
Yeah, I'm obsessed. <laughs> I love it. Well, while I have you, before I let you go and get to rehearsal, can we just take a quick trip down memory lane to some Broadway sure. some history? I mean, look at, we can oh. go back in time. That's Jane Krakowski. That, that we go, yes. And that is, that is the legendary Starlight Express. Um, yes. That was fun to get into that costume every night. <laughs> well, that, that was when I went on for one of the leads. I was, I had my regular part. I had a song, a song in the second act, which was excruciating because we had to do handstands and cartwheels and coffee grinders and all this stuff on roller skates. And that's where I blew my knee out one night during the show. But I was understudied one of the leads, Grease Ball, the diesel train. Yeah. And, um, you know, he would dine on the dining car played by the lovely Jane Krakowski. They were an item. So. Yeah. Oh, yes. Like, And then we, of course, oh. we have some some Saturday oh, Night yeah. Fever. Saturday Night Fever. Oh, my God. That was crazy. Those costumes and the wig and everything. I told them, just make me hideous. I want to be like <laughs> Yanni meets some kind of bad 70s porn star. Just really... <laughs> Greasy, because the character was like, it was funny. Oh, cats. And cats. The best, the best thing about cats was you could eat and do anything, and you could not, I couldn't gain a pound. It wouldn't, you know, nothing. Because we danced that show, eight shows, same thing with Starlight Express, eight shows a week. And I mean, when I went, I went, Betty Buckley and I have become friends because we did Sunset Boulevard together years ago. And she's just heaven. And um, in fact, I sat with her for the night. Was not the night. It was the when when Cats passed Chorus Line to be the longest running show because I performed in it at the Nine Lives of Cats when it was you know nine years I was in it. Uh, but Betty and I sat there and went and it was all other cast members and from from years back. And when they started the Jellicle Ball, which is, ends the first act, everyone started applauding because they knew what the cast was about to do because it is exhausting. It is a long dance number. But um, the late, wonderful Jillian Lynn did such a great job with, you know, the choreography, just amazing. And the, the, like I said, on when we started, the first show I ever saw, my, I was in second grade, when my oh, parents said, oh, see yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> you did the show for a, a moment. You were in, in Beauty and the Beast. For I was in Beauty and the Beast, like, maybe a year. A okay. Year. Not that, no, no. The only show that I was in longer... I, I think I did Cats. To, I, I had leave of absence for a couple times in Cats, but from the road, I did six months on the road and a year and a half on Broadway, and I had and it was like almost almost two years. But I did have like a leave of absence, and I left Cats to do Jeffrey to play Jeffrey, yes. which I later did a film of, and I actually played a cat in a dancer in Cats in Jeffrey, which was kind of life imitating life imitating life imitating life. And then yeah, there's literally right. like. A dozen or more shows like Lacage and all the, all these other shows that come up, and then last year you came back to stage and you did. You yeah, know, you did so because cool. Malik Malik Pancholi and Noah Ricketts and we did a play um, at the second at second stage called To My Girls, and those all those boys that were in that play with me are coming to opening night next week. They're so sweet. Well, Noah I has felt, been on the show. Such a wonderful. Yes. Oh, really? He's great. He's great. They're all great. Jay Armstrong Johnson. I mean, everyone coming. Everyone was so much fun. They were all much younger than me. I played the old, you know, codger uh, that was the Airbnb host in Palm Springs, and uh, they were so kind to me. They made me feel like I was one of the, one of the boys with them. Like they'd go out and invite me along. It was just, it was just a, that was a great experience. J. C. Lee wrote the play, and it was wonderful. Yeah. Stephen well, Brackett directed. Who directed? Uh, you know, um, oh, it's good. it just went out of my head. Anyway, one the Tony one last year for Best Musical. Yes. Well, you are wonderful. A strange loop. Thank you. It's a strange loop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're wonderful. I'm so excited to be in the house on Monday night. I am so excited to to uh, to uh for everybody to come check it out. It's at the beautiful Alice Griffin Jewel Box Theater over at the at the, at the Secret. I love that theater. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful space. Um, Brian and Marsha and Ron, and it's strict engagement. It's you got to get your tickets. Make sure you go on and you grab your tickets as quickly as you can before the the show opens, and you're not going to be able to get a ticket. Paythewriterplay.com. We can follow Brian on social media for all the. I mean, the dozen and 
two dozen things that you do every single day. And uh, we are we are so excited to be there. I can't wait to be there on Monday. Can, thank you for spending yeah. time with us. Sure, sure, anytime. It thank is you. such it is such a pleasure. You're a pleasure. I literally can see you on stages through years of me growing up and learning to love musical theater, and learning to love acting, and learning to love the arts. Oh. And uh, your career and the time you've spent on stages and screens have um, been a joy to watch. So thank you for sharing your art and artistry with us. We so appreciate Thanks. that. That's what I love. So thank you. I'll see you Monday night. I'll see you Monday. Clap Monday. <laughs>